Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweshai, Bahashim, Raka, Kodash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom to you men and you women out there who's doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. We're going to get right into it. Um, I got this precept pulled up over in 2 Timothy chapter 3. All right. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. All right. So look, the Lord is saying right here in this verse that perilous times shall come in the last days. All right. So you can see now that these that those perilous times are here. They are on the horizon. You know, they're they're approaching every single day. All right. The Lord is coming back, man. And his and he's not delayed in his coming. All right, he's going to be here on time at the perfect time. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You see, so these are the the um the spirits, the characteristics that are on the earth now. Okay? Children being disobedient to their parents, men being lovers of their own selves, you know conceited, you know, prideful, uh, nobody can tell them nothing, you know, covetous, boasters, you know, just proud. This, this is the spirit that's on this earth now. That's how you know that we are in the last days, all right? That's how you know that we are in the last days. The Lord is on his way. This is 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, without natural affection, truce breakers, False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. All right. So without natural affection, all you get in this world is is fake love, liquid love, you know, shit that falls through your hands. You can't hold. That's all you get in this world, man. True love is hard to find. Unconditional love is hard to find in these last days. That's another sign that's letting you know that, you know, perilous times are coming. We are in these last days, right? The, the, the love of many has waxed cold, like the scripture says, you know, it, it, it's, it's cold, man. There's no, you know, because love is warmth, you know, love is warmth. It's, it's a warm feeling, you know, it's, it's warmth in itself, but no love without natural affection. Hey, that's cold, man. You know, the perilous times is going to make people become even colder where your neighbor is going to come into your house to try to steer your goods. Like it says, you know, over in Second uh, Ezra, you know, chapter 15 and 16. OK, this is Second Timothy, chapter three and verse four it says traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. See, that's the thing, man. We got to, you know, always put Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai first. You can't choose pleasure over serving the Lord. You know, you can't be one of those who are despisers of those that are good. The scripture says uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Roughly paraphrasing the scriptures, you know, so if their deeds are evil and they don't want the light, then they despise anyone who bring the light. You know, they're like roaches. If you cut on a light, you know, in a dark place <clears throat> and you have roaches or you had roaches, you cut on that light in a dark place. The roaches, the roaches is going to scurry. They're going to run away. You know, uh, that's what anything that likes the dark, it will run away from the light. OK, um, so they despise those that are good. They're traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. This is the spirit that's on the people. This is the spirit that's on majority of the people you meet. All right. Only the elect will be thinking outside the box. Only the elect will be thinking differently from this. The elect will actually love those that are good. The elect will, you know, they will have natural affection, you know. 
They will have true love. Why? Because they're occupying in this truth. They're occupying in this knowledge. They're growing with it. See, it's beautiful to grow in the truth, man. You know, you got to stay in it. You got to stay in the furnace. You got to constantly go. You get cut, you know, the Lord will heal you right back up. But you got to stay getting cut and you got to stay getting healed. You know, you got to stay in the process. Don't give up. All right. Stand in this truth. It teaches you natural affection. Stand in this truth allows you to love those that are good. It allows you to stay away from that traitor mindset, that prideful mindset. You don't want to be a boaster. You don't want to be, you know, a blasphemer. So you want to stay occupied in this truth to the best of your ability. Like the scripture says, you got to give, you got to give all to stand. You know, roughly pra paraphrasing the scriptures, man. You got to have, let me get that. Um, let me see. Um. Having done all to stand. Where is it? Ephesians 6 and 13. Let's get that real quick. Then we're going to come back. All right. This is um, Ephesians 6. And I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand, so like it, that ye may be able to withstand. Hold on. I'm reading down. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. So our this is what we're warned against. We're warned against demons. You go into that word principalities is demons, you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're going against. All right. Those who control this earth are wicked. The scriptures tell us that in uh, Job chapter nine, and verse 24. All right. So the Lord want us to be strong. Right. Be strong in the power of his might. He wants us to trust in him. Put on the whole armor that he has given us. You know, what he say in the scriptures? Above all, lifting up the shield of faith. You know, because this is, we're wrestling against the things that are of spiritual that have became physical, you know. But it all starts in the spirit. Okay. But the Lord wants us to constantly endure, constantly overcome. Okay. You want to constantly dwell in this truth. You want to do all to stand. Let me see here. It says um, in verse 13, this is what I want right here. I'm going to continue on to. I mean, this is everything right here. But you can continue reading on down on your own. But what I want is um, uh, 13, so like you. It says, Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You see, so this is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to uh, give our all, give our 100%, do this to the best of your ability, you know, you got to do all to stand, you know, let's go back to the second Timothy. We don't want to be part of this, um, this collective destructive, uh, this collective destruction group. You know, we don't want to be a part of that. And the Lord coming back to destroy all those who think this way, all those who have this spirit. OK, this is uh, second Timothy, chapter three and verse five. It says having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof for such turn away. You see, our people have a form of godliness. You know, we are the best on the entire earth when it comes to sports or, you know, anything, you know. But our people constantly deny where we get that power from. OK, but guess what? The Lord has an elect that he's going to deliver. He has an elect that has been serving him from the beginning. He's coming back for it. and all of those who are not part of the elect would be burnt up with nuclear missile fire or caught in the in Jacob's trouble. 
You know, you got to you got to get away from these spirits. You got to get away from this mindset and dwell in the truth. No matter what you're going through, constantly dwell in this truth. Constantly repent. Uh, repent. So like, yeah, constantly repent because that's the only escape. That's the only way out. The scriptures tell us on Luke chapter 13 and verse three, repent or you shall all likewise perish. All right. So if you're not repenting out here, you will die. OK. This is Second Timothy, chapter three and verse six. It says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lust. Verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So this is what's happening in the world, man. You got people constantly learning about this and learning about that. They got so much knowledge, but they don't have the truth. They don't have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh bestow upon his people. They don't have that. They don't have the spiritual uh, junction, you know. They don't. They lead away silly women that follow them because of their money or they follow them because of their uh, status or whatever. They lead away, you know, the people from flashy carnal things, but they never have the knowledge of the truth. All right. That's all. That's who those people in those churches. You know what I'm saying? Those people in those synagogues. Hey, man, you're doing all of this studying. You have all this knowledge, but you're never but you never come to the truth. You never come to the truth. That's a sad, sad place to be in. The scriptures tell us in Ecclesiastes 12 or 13, not 13, 12 and 12, you know, be careful about, be careful, roughly paraphrasing, be careful about going into many books. Much study is weariness of the flesh. All right. So you got to keep read, uh, reading this word because the scriptures tell us, you know, that, um, these words will never fail. Let's get it. In Isaiah 34 and 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, meaning the prophecies. No one of these prophecies shall fail. None shall want her mate, meaning no other book, no other study will be able to compare to the scriptures. No other book on the face of the earth can compare to the, the book of the Lord because of what? They don't tell you what's to come. They don't tell you prophecy. All right. So you can learn everything you want. But if you're not learning about the Lord, that knowledge is vain. OK, it's vain. The scriptures tell us the knowledge of this world is foolishness with God. OK, it's foolishness with the with, with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, with the true power of this earth. It's foolishness. The scripture says right here in Isaiah 34, 16, for my mouth, it hath commanded and his spirit, it hath gathered them. All right. So the spirit is what gathered the elect. All right. It's not of no man doing. It's of the spirit. That's what uh, connects the elect together under Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. His spirit, it says, and his spirit, it hath gathered them. Who? Who? Hey, it's Yahweh Shai. One the word made flesh in John chapter one and verse 14. Let's get it. Look. This is the book of John chapter one and verse 14. It says, and the word was made flesh. Who is the word? The word is Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It says, and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory and Salakia, the glory of Salakia. John chapter 1 and verse 14. I'm going too fast. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we beheld the word in the flesh. All right? We seen Yahweh Shai, man. The word, the name Yahweh Shai means he delivers or he shall save. Okay? And you can um, back that up with a precept over in uh, Matthew chapter one and verse twenty one, lets you know that Mary begot a son, and they, and you know what I'm saying, and it, it tells you how what his name mean in that verse. Okay, now over here it shows you that the word was made flesh. All right, now the scriptures tell us in John chapter six and verse sixty three 
to read these words because they are spirit and they are life. They are the spirit of Yahweh Bashim. They are the spirit of Yahweh Shai, who was sent by Yahweh. Okay, that's what I want to say. This is uh, John chapter 6 to verse 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All right. So by you constantly dwelling in this truth, by you constantly reading these words, you are constantly dwelling in life, not death. All right. You're not going to have those um, thoughts or the, or that mindset that's, that was given to us over in Second Timothy chapter three. You're not going to have that the thoughts of being prideful. Now, if you do, you're repenting from it, you know. You're constantly fighting the flesh. You're in this fight. You're repenting constantly over and over again. All right. You're repenting from being prideful. You're repenting from being covetous. You're repenting from all of those things that was mentioned in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. You're repenting from it. You're learning. You're learning how to be opposite from the wicked. All right. This earth was accustomed, is accustomed to being wicked. You're born into wickedness. But by you dwelling in this truth, by you, by you constantly repenting, by you constantly, you know, uh, listening to your elders, you're growing, you're, you're living. All right. And before you know it, you're going to have a new body and a new mind. Lord willing, you're a part of that elect. Lord willing, I'm a part of that elect. You know, who's ever listening? You know, so you got to constantly endure to the end. That's why the scripture says this in Matthew. So like you. 24 and 13. It says. I'm going to start at verse um, 12. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This is the precept that I was quoting. You know, iniquity uh, has abound. Iniquity is all across the earth. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Just because iniquity has abound and will continue to abound. The love of many will wax cold. People who are once showing you love will turn their backs on you because of the dire, perilous times that will be upon them. Okay. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So you got to constantly endure everything, man. You got to endure all the cuts that you may, that you will receive in this truth. You got to endure all of the fire, all of the spiritual burning. You know, you got to go through. You got to be a sacrifice. OK, you got to endure it all, man. Don't don't jump out. Don't jump out the pot. Don't jump out the furnace. Stay in the furnace. It's good to dwell in it. You know, it's good to constantly fight, constantly repent, man, because you're enduring and you got to keep this fight on until the end, until the Lord come to your house. I come and take the fight completely off you. See, that's what the physician is coming to do. He's coming to heal. All right. He's coming to heal and stop whatever fight you're fighting. All right. The fight will be over soon. You got to constantly endure. Hopefully this is edifying. Yasharala. I'm going to end it by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka, Kodash. Double honors once again to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom, Yasharala. Constantly endure. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Don't let your iniquities lift up themselves. That's what they want to do. It's your job to constantly repent and keep it moving. Shalom.